There's the man, Corey Heim, breathing easy. Jake Drew, top 10 start for this kid. Yeah, good, good job for that young man. Boss man, David Gillen, back in row number six, along with Matt Crafton. A couple of grizzly veterans there, guys that know how to get it done behind the wheel. Parker Kligerman's won here before. Rajon Carruth, so fast all year long. Let's see if we can find Grant Enfinger on the radio. Hello, Grant. It's Michael Waltrip and the Fox team. Do you copy? My dad's allowed clear, Mikey. I got some news for you. Average start for the winner last four races, 23rd. You got them right where you want them, don't you? That was fine, and Jeff Hens was playing all along. We uh, <laughs> we had the opportunity to qualify up front, and I was like, no, let's, let's be here at 25th to start. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to see a lot of action today, obviously. I know the family's in town with you. How special is it to run Talladega, your home racetrack? Yeah, man, this is where the dream started for me in the stands as a little kid uh, with my dad here. So uh, it's always special for me to, to come to Talladega and to be able to race in, in, a, in a heck of a, a, a good truck with a great operation like, like TMS Racing. So um, our plan is to take this champion power equipment Chevy to the front. Uh, hopefully we can do that in stage one. Uh, look for us to be aggressive today, though, Michael. We uh, we got to add some stage points, and, uh, and obviously we're in this fight for the championship. So um, our, our opinion right now is to be aggressive to do that. All right, buddy. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. And that is the Love's Absolutely. RV Thank Stop. Thank you, guys. Hope you all enjoy the show. Loves RV Stop 250. He's so nice. Oh, right? yeah. He's the nicest guy out there. Starting back there, though, it's interesting we talked to him. He's he might not be that nice there. today. That's right. He's going to get up race. on the wheel starting back in the 25th position. You know, nice equals love. It's a Love Travel Stop there we go. 250. Yeah. So this could all work out for Grand Finger. How about our Craftsman track description? You can see this track in Alabama, 2.66 miles in length. Turns are banked at 33 degrees. That means when you get to the turn, you Adjust the wheel to the left a little bit, but you never adjust your foot. Wide open around this racetrack. We're going to be four, even five wide. So much action today. Um, a lot of fun. Looking forward to this race. Let's take a look at our race analysis. This race is 94 laps, 250 miles. Pretty short two stages, 20 laps and 20 laps. Then our final stage is 54 laps. You see our pit window somewhere between 30 and 32 laps. Yeah, and talking to the teams, Phil, we've deciphered that maybe at the end of the first stage, two tires and gas, four tires at the end of the second stage, and then maybe pit with about 64 laps on the board. Yep, sounds good. And how about for a couple more stories to watch? Here's Josh. Start with the 35 of Jake Garcia. Qualified third, but some trouble. Reported an issue with the clutch, so he came back down to pit road. They were looking under the hood, trying to see if they could figure out what's going on. Now they're going to jack it up and continue to work on this 35, but a tough start to the day for the rookie there, Regan. Well, Josh, we got some familiar faces returning to the truck series, one of which is Chandler Smith driving the 25 for Rackley Wear today. Starts 24th, told me before he got in the truck that this is going to be a fun race for him. He has never driven anything in all three series that he doesn't have any pressure on him, that he can just go out there and race for the win, not worry about points, not worry about anything. Had looked to do some truck starts earlier this year. It hadn't worked out. He is excited about today. He was pumped up when I talked to him. Look for him to be very aggressive in that 25, by the way, a truck that won this race one year ago. That's right. Thank you, Regan. Yep. Chandler Smith, a five time winner in this series, finished third last year overall in the series. You know, we've talked about the Love's RV stop race. Well, we're going to go right on board with the truck. And you can see there's love all over this truck as well. Starting 18th will be Zane Smith. Every driver in the playoffs I've talked to said, we're going to the front. We're charging for those stage points. It's going to be fun to watch. This is another driver that needs those stage points as well. Carson Hosevar, he will start from the seventh spot. We're going to have a little bit of a unique view. We're going to have a foot camp. Now, you think here you run wide open all the way around the racetrack. You don't use anything but that right foot. That's not true. You have to adjust and modulate that throttle and brake in traffic and we're going to be able to watch Carson do that. And that's that's sometimes how you make passes, Jamie. You let off the gas to get a push and that's how you go to the front. All right, 250 miles coming your way. We'll drop the green flag next.
Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway as we get ready to drop the green flag here for the Love's RV Stop 250. Quick update, Jake Garcia, you heard Josh Sims report he had an issue. They just took it behind the wall, guys. It was cutting out every time he lifted his foot off that clutch. What a horrible break for that young man. Chase Purdy, the Kyle Busch Motorsports driver, picked up the team's 70th career pole here today. He chose the outside. Nick Sanchez on the inside. They form two nice rows. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Talladega. Little teamwork there on the start. Chase Purdy dipping down in front of Sanchez in that bottom row. But Jack Wood with a strong start on the outside. Got all the way up beside Purdy. But looks like that bottom line is going to prevail off too. Another teammate, Jack Wood, in second KPM truck. Matt Kraft is trying to lead that third line on the outside and hung, hang up those guys in the middle. 99 of Ben Rhodes jumps in front of the 88 as they get some power, some momentum. As you see Jack Wood dropping to the back of the 51, he slips back, losing spots. <laughs> and he's wide open right there. He's doing all he can do. And you see those guys in the draft drive by him on both sides. The last thing these guys want to be is three wide this early in the race. But this is Talladega. There are just so many opportunities to stick that nose out into some clean air. Hope your buddies come with you and draft to the front. How about Raja leading that third line now with Christian Eckes right behind him? You know, historically, Phil, the third line, the outside lane can't do much with that bottom line here at Talladega. But that could all change. You never know, slightest tweak to the trucks, the way they're running, the weather, all that can affect exactly where these trucks run. Riding along in this Love's RV stop on board for Zane Smith, lined up behind Christian Eckes, Brett Holmes, the 32 truck over on the inside. Now these truckers had zero practice today. They woke up and hit the track for qualifying. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Now they've got a little bit of cloud cover here and there. Big uh, jump, I said, for the 51 of Jack Wood. You can't pass before the start finish line. He moved to the outside. NASCAR looked at the video and determined that he was was a, a, up beside the truck that was leading a party. They brought him to pit road. Yeah, you basically have to be in line till you get to start finish line. Then it, then anything happens after that's OK. So pass through penalty for the 51 of Jack Wood, who had a good start. Great qualifying effort for him. But his teammate Chase Purdy continues to lead here. There goes that third line. You see it again forming up there. Chandler Smith, the 25 truck, is leading that line right now. <laughs> Don't you love it? Chandler just couldn't stand it. He said, I got to run, I got to run, let's go. And that's when you make that move, and then you hope your buddies, like I said earlier, come with you. It doesn't look like it's going to work. I look for this bottom line to prevail most, most of the early parts of this event. Okay, Raja Karuth is doing a nice job leading that second line. Now Chase Purdy is going to jump up in front of that second line of Raja Karuth. He did that to get the push right back to the bottom he goes. That's how you block off that upper line. You take their run away, get that energy, and put your truck on the bottom in front of that line. At this point, how much is Chase Purdy driving in his rearview mirror, Michael? Uh, at least half the time, maybe even 75%. You're, you're constantly looking forward and back, forward and back. So you know right now what you need to do. You're going to go straight down that yellow line. And look, there's a run on the outside. He's monitoring that. You Look at his foot. You said it, Phil. He's right here in this lead pack but he's got to manage his throttle and the brake. That's great TV, guys, just showing what all goes on behind the wheel. And these are his feet we're talking about, <laughs> not even his hands. He pumped the brake right there a little bit. Just He's just trying to manage the gap to the truck in front of him. That outside line, you see they lost all energy, fell back, fell apart. Now they're forming up. Two nice lines here as Chase Purdy continues to lead the inside. See the telemetry over lower left part of your screen. You can see the brake pedal and the throttle, and both of those things will be moving back and forth. Look at Christian Eckes giving a big push to Raja. That outside lane is able to hang right there. Isn't that great? Watching his feet, showing that he uses the brake, the gas. He's all over both pedals, making sure that he's exactly where he wants to be. Wasn't that Chase Purdy that he just went by? The guy that had led every lap so far. That's right, Chase Purdy had left off, led, led all four laps. It only led four laps in his career before today. Now he slipped back. He's third truck in line in the middle lane now. Look at Ty Majeski. We talked about our playoff racers that have to get up here and make a statement in stage one. Majeski's doing just that. Well, for the second time today, the 88 of Matt Crafton, don't look now, but he's trying to get somebody to come with him. He's in the top line, that bright yellow number 88. 
Yeah, Zane Smith moved up in front of him. Now there's other trucks moving up as well. And then there's trucks him. moving down too. <laughs> They're moving all over the place, just trying to get some sort of momentum from the draft. There is a lot of movement here. Pass through for the 51 of Jack Wood. Critical for Jack not to speed on that penalty, and it's going to be hard for him, I think, to stay on the lead lap. These guys are lapping this track at least two seconds faster than they were able to in qualifying. Qualifying, you're all by yourself, no help from the other trucks or the draft, and so he's going to get chewed up in a hurry. He can just hope that no one else gets lapped before the end of this first stage and can get a free pass. And you see these drivers here going, going through the trial. Well, Jack is not quite a half a lap ahead of him, but again, at two seconds a lap, it goes by quickly. Riding on board with Zane Smith, you see Brett Moffitt just ahead of him. Brett Moffitt, welcome back. 2018 Truck Series champion. He's a teammate of Zane Smith for this race. And guys, I can't help but wonder if this is maybe an audition for him. They haven't mentioned a replacement for Zane Smith for next year. Doing a nice job working together as teammates so far. Wow, this is intense. I mean, it's only lap six, Phil, and we're already three wide, side drafting, a lot of bumping, very aggressive. Right now, Nick Sanchez can breathe a little bit. Doesn't have anybody to his outside. Has Ty Majeski locked onto his tailgate. Osovar right there in third. Corey Heim in fourth. What about Parker Kligerman? We knew we would say his name in that tide ride a lot today. Former winner here at Talladega. Really, really good run early. And a great looking truck, but you're a two time winner at Talladega in the truck series. So if you're going to jump in a truck, why don't you come here and, and give it a whirl, right? They're not racing in the Xfinity series, where, by the way, he's trying to make a run for the championship. He's just on the outside looking in. Chandler Smith also involved in that playoff battle in the Xfinity series. Raja Carruth now is going to jump out of line. Was that a bail? Decided he didn't like maybe the way his truck felt or the way things looked? I thought maybe that he was looking to get with his teammate Grant Infinger, but Grant's already gone by him. Grant right now is running about the 13th spot. It changes every lap. Yeah. Nick Sanchez continues to lead now. Kyle Busch Motorsports been been strong. Kyle Busch himself is actually standing on the grid next to Nick Sanchez. And big news this week. Kyle Busch Motorsports has been sold to Spire Motorsports. The building, the trucks, Rowdy Manufacturing, all of it. Kyle Busch, though, just saying he will be in a truck five times next year for the team. He's also staying on to kind of give perspective and, and oversee and help help in some ways. I mean, if you're Kyle Busch, you know how to get a win. So let's help out Spire Motorsports as they make the transition. Yeah, some of the biggest news we've had in the truck series in a long time. Certainly has been. Nick Sanchez, Ty Majeski, your leaders here at Talladega.
Welcome back to NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Racing from Talladega. Nothing has changed since we stepped aside. Nick Sanchez continues to lead Ty Majeski and Carson Hosebar. But you see on the outside, Parker Kligerman with a nice run. Really tight pack racing here going out. I want to remind the folks at home, you can't lock bumpers in the trucks. You can bump and you can push, but you lock them up, NASCAR will bring you to pit road. So keep your eye on, on that situation. These drivers know how to manage it. Sometimes it's just too, too tempting not to hang on that back bumper just a little bit longer. NASCAR won't like that. Jamie, Michael pointed out the last lap before this, the fastest truck on the racetrack was Greg Van Alst. And he's running 32nd and he was the fastest truck on the race track. That means he had 31 trucks in front of him to help that, help that truck pull through the air and make that lap time 32nd position, fastest truck on the track. And you see eight laps to go in stage number one. Stages today, 20 laps, 40 laps, and that'll get us to 94 laps. We'll be 250 miles around this enormous oval track. Massive track and you see that fast number four truck of Chase Purdy he's got to the back of Parker Kligerman and they're slowly making progress on the outside up toward Nick Sanchez leading this race it might take a couple laps to get a truck link but they've done that now you see Parker Kligerman now is going to try to pull up beside of Nick Sanchez with a good push from Chase Purdy I think the key to Kligerman is Purdy we know how fast it was pole truck he can get on the back of that truck and get him up there and challenge for the lead Let's get an update on our leader, Josh. Yeah, guys, important to notice that Nick Sanchez does not have a lot of experience at these super speedways, but crew chief Danny Stockman said he did really good in the draft at Atlanta. He was really good at Daytona, maybe didn't have the finishes that he wanted, but right now they said, be patient, you're doing very well, and your moneymaker right now is the corner entry. So a good start to the race for the two. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Nick Sanchez just continues to impress. And you know, look, we're getting ready to lap a truck here, and sometimes this gets a little tight. You gotta swing up wide. You're gonna be three wide at some point. This opens up opportunity for other drivers. This sometimes can cause an issue as you pass by. And that's Jack Wood. He had that penalty for jumping the initial start as they make their way around him. A lot yep. of spotter communication right here. There's what I'm talking about. You can see it's already getting jumbled up a bit. Jack's fast enough to hang there too. He's not just gonna drop to the back of this line. Whoa, Brett Holmes pulled right down on the back of that orange truck. See the one of David Gillen try to side draft on that 51. Brett Holmes pushing the, bumping the 51 of Jack Wood. You see him get a little bit out of shape. Jack's in good shape right now. We're right along with Zane Smith. Nobody else in danger of going a lap down. So if we can run this stage out, Jack will get that free pass. Saw Jake Drew in the 61 get shuffled back. He lost his spot and he's falling back. He qualified top 10, was running top 10 until just that moment now, trying to start that outside lane. Regan, what are they saying in Parker Kligerman's pit? Well, Jamie, it's been a great start to the race for Parker so far. Always so good on these drafting racetracks. Of course, two wins here at Talladega. Looking for his third one today. It would make you think they would bring the same truck every time, right? Not this time. They built a brand new truck for today with help with Kyle Busch Motorsports on this truck. It is very fast right now. They felt like the truck they had before was not good enough to do what he's doing right now. Lead the pack and be the aggressive guy. He felt like he always had to be the guy pushing before. That's not the case right now. Looking great in the 75. That's impressive. You don't talk to many crew chiefs that will tell you we're going to build a brand new racetrack to go to a super speedway track. Getting down to it now on lap 17, four laps to go in this stage. There are a lot of our playoff drivers right now outside that top 10 in the point paying positions. And if you're looking at the pylon, you see those drivers in that goldish yellow color. Those are the playoff drivers, except for Heim. He's in green. That means he has punched his ticket to the championship race in Phoenix, so he doesn't have much to worry about. Clearman is just so close. He was almost there into three, but taking that wider arc around the outside put him in a bind and fell back off the leader. That's Jake Garcia who had gone behind the wall at the start of the race having issues. Looks like they figured out their problem, trying to make his way back out and join the race. Ty Majeski saying. Eventually, eventually that two is going to go block the top, but we're going to have to help out the rear by play here. So we'll see if it works. Just stay working here. You know, the spotters, they, they just want you to be aware of everything. They want you to understand what might happen. Even, even if that doesn't happen, 
that, that's what Majeski has to look out for. Because the spotter has a global view. He can see more clearly what all is going on. And he thinks that outside line can get a run, and the two will go up and block. And those spotters are the same voices that you'll hear tomorrow during the cup race. That was Brandon Lines, who was William Byron's spotter, spotting for Ty Majeski right here today. Watch Chase Purdy just behind the 75 of Parker Kligerman. Whoa, you got to be steady when you're trying to bump in that back end. You hit it wrong, and it'll turn that truck ahead of you right around. I'm not sure the one of David Gillen was in the back of the four Chase Purdy prior to that. Kligerman doing a nice job there, dead even down the back stretch. Look at that bump from Gillen to bump Chase Purdy up to Kligerman. That might help Kligerman. Get by that two. Well, the same thing was happening on the bottom, Phil. <laughs> Carson Hosovar in the back of Majeski, and that propelled that line forward. How about David Gilliland, co owner of the race team, 47 years old, says, You know what? I'm going to come out and jump in the truck for the second time this year, running up front here, trying to make moves. Third truck in line on the outside. Michael, let's remind Jamie that's not that old, 47. Years okay. Old. Hey, he's, he's not that much older than me. Let's be honest. You can compete at a high level at 47. <laughs> It's great to see David out here, though. This has been a great place for him, great style of racing. Last race here, he was on the pole for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Final lap here, this stage. A lot of points to be given out here. Can't just ride around if you're a playoff driver. You need those points. Who's going to pick up this stage win? Look at Grant Infinger. He has Christian Eckes behind him in that high line. But Majeski with a strong push to the back of Sanchez propels them well ahead as Carson Hosmar now is going to have a bit of a run. Will he decide to swing up to the high side in that third truck? Sanchez, Majeski, Hosovar, Heim being glued to each other. And you get Chase Purdy ducked out a line there. Trying to make it happen here. Can Nick Sanchez hang on? Carson Hosovar tries to make a move and it's going to be Nick Sanchez picks up stage win number one. That's his fourth stage win of 2023. Great job. These guys got a little bit jiggy here coming to the checker. Watch right behind the tide ride. Whoa. I think Chase Purdy, I don't know that he wanted to go to the outside. He was pushed to the outside. That was a crash that just didn't, <laughs> didn't all the way develop. It's been all about Nick Sanchez. He's led the most laps so far today. Picks up the stage win pit stops after this.
What track in these playoffs worries me the most? Definitely Talladega. Got to probably go with Talladega. I hate to say it because it's my home track and I love that place, but it's Talladega. Talladega in the playoffs is always insane. Talladega, I mean, it's a crap shoot. Bristol? Yeah, it's just always a battle. And I know they give a sword away for a reason. I'd probably say the starting one at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Obviously, that's the one that I want to go run the best at because we ran the worst at it last year and probably the one that concerns me the most. What? Hmm. I don't, th Bristol? I don't think these guys have watched all these races at Talladega. <laughs> ben Rhodes has been in about all those races at Talladega. I don't know how he can not say Talladega. Because he likes this place. I'm telling you, he loves this place, so maybe it's not as scary to him. Well, I, I do too, but it's, <laughs> it would certainly cause some sleepless nights if I was a playoff contender. Uh, you know, think back, Phil, when we were drivers back in the day, if you will. That, that's 10 years or older. As, as this track, it, despite its reputation, you couldn't get wait to get there and challenge it and show everybody that you were going to be the man on the biggest track in NASCAR. How about this? Stage one results, those very much needed 10 points for Nick Sanchez, who came into this race below the cut line. So 22 points back. He's got to get all he can. Yeah, he did it, too. Only four of our eight playoff drivers got points, and you see them finishing first through fourth in this stage. What about Holmes and Howard? Yeah. Fifth and sixth in this first stage. They're showing that they might have what it takes to win at Talladega. Look at Dean Thompson back there in 10th. He had to go to the rear for unapproved adjustments, made his way to, all the way up into the top 10. And David Gilliland, 47-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> A very spry 47-year-old. Yes, he is. <laughs> Why do we, let's, let's end this age thing already. I just love it because he runs the team, all these youngsters around him, then he can get in the truck too and, and put it down and show them how it's done. I have pit stops here. I'm thinking like you mentioned, two tires here. Yeah, I talked to a couple of crew chiefs and they feel like two here and four at the second break. Yeah. Maybe none or two on that green flag stop. Talking to some of the crew chiefs, they had some tire wear uh, at this race last year. Same tires last year too, so they're a little bit worried about that. Obviously, not much rubber on the racetrack prior to the start of this one. See the drivers making their way down pit road. Regan, they're coming your way. Well, Jamie, it's been a perfect start to this Talladega race for Carson Hosepark. Scoring those stage points, that was one of their primary goals in this first stage. That along with not getting into any trouble. The truck right now, absolutely perfect. It'll be two tires for him. And we got Zane Smith uh, turn side, or the 38 turned sideways on pit road there. The 11 of Corey Heim, just a little bit loose with that truck. Needs a small adjustment for that. Good otherwise, Josh. Well, the team told Nick Sanchez that was a textbook stage as he got much needed stage points with the win. He came in for fuel only, said, I love the way this truck is handling right now, guys. There's a lot going on. As you see, there is a tire rolling down pit road. There was another tire that got away. Zane Smith was backwards, but I couldn't tell if he was in the wrong box and had to back it he up. Got, he got damaged. That truck is damaged on the right rear. So the team will have to attend to that. I think that damage is from either his tire carrier or a tire, probably a tire. Not sure if maybe Zane got tapped as he was coming in the pits. This, he can still win this race. I think totally. that's minor damage. They'll regroup. Maybe it changes their strategy, but still going to have a chance to win the race. And who does that belong to is the question. Let's see what happened here. That's going to be Zane's, I think. No, he just got, got a little bit too oh. hot. Oh, that's where the damage came from. What about that crew member? That is violent. Oh. Just too much rear brake right there, yeah, Phil. Yeah, exactly. They locked yeah. up. And look at that. Oh, my wow. goodness. That's a lot of damage to that right rear quarter panel. And look at him. He just casually, and he picks up his kept, wrench. Kept on going about his yeah. work. That is incredible. He was able to brace himself a bit and, and take the best angle into the truck that he thought he could do. That's athleticism. So, so glad these guys are athletes now. Oh, but that, that is a hard hit right there. Bam. You could hear it on the onboard. Goodness, I hope that he's okay. That explains where both tires came from. There's that warrior. Yeah, man, oh man. Look at him, just continues to, to dig. And as to for keep a driver, doing his job, to keep doing his job. For a driver, though, that's got to just weigh on you. Like, you want to know if your guy's okay. Let's listen on board here. Oh. 
Oh, that was so scary. Real time here. You can see Zane looking in the mirror. Zane knew that that happened. Amazing. Thank goodness they're athletes, like you said, Michael. He's up, and Adam looks like he's going to continue the day. Stay with us. More from Talladega. And welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway for the Love's RV Stop 250. 25 laps completed, 69 laps to go as we ride on board with Zane Smith, who had that awful pit road accident there. Let's take a look back again at what happened. Zane turns to go in his pit, and you can see the black marks. The tires locked up in the back, and that was just incredible that that athlete was able to maintain control of his body to put it into the side of that truck in a way that he could walk away. And that is Charles Plank. He's the tire carrier. And I'm hearing, Josh, you've got him? Yeah, down here with Charles Plank, and he's watching the replay there. What was going through your mind when that was happening on pit road? Uh, I thought I could clear it, and I didn't. But it looks like I almost cleared it jumping over. Uh, I'm glad I made it on the deck lid instead of getting underneath it. So we're ready. We're ready for the next stop. And how are you feeling? You good to go? I'm great to go. There you go. He's a tough guy, guys. Uh, that makes me so happy. That, and, and, you know, I said he, he had control of the tires. He attempted to jump over the truck. That's, yeah. how, that's how present he was in the moment, what he needed to do not to hurt himself. Carrying two tires, by the way, when he got hit. Beast mode. I think the only thing that was wrong with him, he had a fat lip. Well, it's, a, it's incredible that we say it all the time, the athleticism that these pit crew guys have. That's just a great example of it. Not only that, it looked like he's kind of halfway tickled by it. You know, he's like, <laughs> no, we're ready to go for the next one. That's awesome. 
Thought he could jump Going the truck, right. he said. He's good. The fox. Ticker guy's good. I brake pedal through three and four, and it was normal. Then I went pretty much where I was right around here. I went to it, and it was just soft. Like, it's still engaged. It was just super soft. And then it just spun. All good work. Cover here. You hear Zane worried about his, his crew member. They told him he's all good, he's fine, and then he explained what happened. Yeah, and you saw the issue on pit road there, but what about Bristol? When Zane came to pit road, hit it outside of his box, cost him a good finish at Bristol. So a couple of mental errors here um, for Zane. Mental, I say that here at Bristol, just pitting in the wrong spot. Today, a mechanical problem. And the reason probably why I feel his brake pedal was soft we saw Carson Hosvar all over his brakes, on and off, on and off. That can lead to that happening, get too much heat in those brakes. So Zane Smith back in the 33rd spot right now as we get ready to go green once again. Let's get an update, though, on Corey Heim. Regan. Well, Jamie, you guys talked about it earlier on in the race about tire wear and what we could expect today. The first truck that I went to check on tire wear, Corey Heim, the right rear that came off of that truck. You see right there some cords showing up just a little bit right now. Check with Scott Zipidelli, crew chief. He said, I'm not concerned about that right now. The track hasn't had anybody on it yet. It should get better as we go, but something to keep an eye on. And a couple of our leaders, Regan, didn't get tires, so this could develop into a situation. We'll have to watch that closely. Nick Sanchez, Ty Majeski, Ben Rhodes, Parker Kligerman. Parker Kligerman, the first truck on the outside. It's just like the way the stage number one ended. Majeski's been a heck of a pusher on the back of that two truck of Sanchez. I think he'd be very comfortable with just running. Oh no, Zane Smith back on pit road. They continue working on that truck for Zane Smith. That was nobody. Are they going, going behind the wall? Behind the wall? Look at this mess. We'll have to get an update on Zane Smith, who came into this race below the cut line. Meanwhile, Nick Sanchez up front continues to lead. He's led 22 laps and continues. Getting reports. Zane wasn't headed to the garage. He was headed back to the track. That was kind of strange, though. They were talking to him about something. It just now left pit road, so he these drivers will catch him about the time they get to turn one. Oh, New here leader, we go. Parker Kligerman with a big push from David Gilliland. talking about it jumping out of gear. Wow, look at that hornet's nest going by him. Look at the big push up three wide. Christian Eckes really giving a nice shove to Raja. And then you can see the bottom lane there with Gilman. He's committed. Sanchez pulls right up to the rear tailgate of the one of Gilman. Look at these things dance around. And I was just, Phil, I was just gonna say this is what Talladega is all about. Three wide, bouncing, weaving, craziness. I love this place. I mean, to be a fan and watch it, it's just, it's breathtaking. As a pit reporter, you're down there, you, you have to stop yourself from watching. There's just so much action, so many things happening. Three wide, three different lanes. Parker Kligerman. And here he comes, Carson Hosovar, trying to lead this race today for the first time. Brett Holmes, the local driver from 20 minutes away, thought he had this one last year. When the caution came out, he ended up bringing it home third, a best career finish. Dean Thompson right behind him, battling up here inside the top 10. There's the foot. See, flat on the floor right now. But he, he's just sitting there ready to hit that break when needed. Every now and then, if he gets too far out in front of the truck behind him, he'll tap that brake to try to engage with a 32 of Brett Holmes. And there we go, three wide. Chase Purdy's bringing that party to the front. Look at that line go up top. How about that middle line now, even with Kligerman, Nose to nose they go. It looks like Carson Hosovar, yep, shown as the leader for the first time today. He's got that great push going from the 32. Remember, Brett Holmes came within a whisker of winning this race here last year. 
He was leading on the last lap to all the carnage happened. Just a whisker. A whisker away. What a celebration it would be if David Gilliland running second on the inside line went to victory lane. He came up one spot short. 38. 38 going to the garage now. Zane Smith. That means Homestead is a must win for Zane Smith. You heard him on the radio saying it kept popping out of gear. So certainly more issues than just the body damage we saw from that pit stop. Whoa, there's part of the rear bed flipped up That's here. That's a different look. Yeah, we've th those things have springs on them. Sometimes the air will overcome that spring. NASCAR will not black flag him for that. That's something that the team will want that thing to be down, but they can't tape it down. It has to be able to work and open up to let air out from under that truck. That's on our leader, Carson Hosevar's truck. I've seen so many almosts. Here's, <laughs> here's another big one. Oh. Look at that. You know, Phil, you said he has to win at Miami. What if these guys all crash? I mean, well, there's, good point. there's good still point. a lot. This is making me think they are all going to crash, <laughs> by the way. That and my heart rate at 142 <laughs> beats a minute. 20 trucks wrecked in this race <laughs> last year. Not many playoff drivers were standing here. You got to stay here. Watch this one to the end. It's the Craftsman Truck Series. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway, where Carson Hosevar continues to lead. A big lead right now as the final laps here in stage number two. Five to go. That blue and yellow truck, Napa Auto Care Chevy for Eckes. I think he's run about five more miles than anybody, <laughs> Bill. He's been in the third line about every <laughs> lap of this race. Raja doing a nice job giving him a push. And then Raja's teammate, Grant Enfinger, right behind him. They need to make something happen. Grant really desperately wanted to get some stage points. Got shut out in stage one, looking to get some here. Parker Kligerman trying to pull that middle up. Nick Sanchez right behind him as, whoa. Is that Jake? I think that's the 35 of Jake. Just getting out of the way, obviously. 17 laps down. Apparently have their clutch issues fixed. 
a little bit broken up up front now. Yeah, there's some trucks that are saying, okay, I can't get anything anyway. I'm going to fall back. So you see the back of the pack's breaking down a little bit. Let's listen to Carson Hosovar. Half back on you, now. Yeah, the gap is slowing down. So I told you, you're good. Stay with them. Three to go here. Three to go. Half the 98. Half the 98. Half the 98. Go two by two. Still outside. Two by two. One back 98. Still four support behind. Pushing outside. Going to be pushing behind half. Think high to one outside. That's Tyler Green, the spotter, doing a lot of talking today. And that's for Carson Hosovar, who now just slipped into third as Parker Kligerman once again leads. Nick Sanchez won first stage. He wants to get another, another shot at taking stage number two. Wow. I can't believe this precision driving has been able to be successful. These guys just so close to one another, but not a mistake yet. Eckes is continuing to lead. No, that's Brett Holmes in that blue number 32 leading that outside line now. Do I dare say it? It's been. Oh, trouble. Well, I almost did. Yeah. I almost did. I didn't even say it. Caution is out for the second time today. Oh, Gillen sliding. Is that freezing? There. It is freezing. Stuart freezing with a big hit for him. David Gilliland as well goes around. David dropped to the back, dropped out of that lead pack. Tyler Ankrum involved. Trying to find some safety and unfortunately came along. That's what I always wonder when you drop back, if you want to drop back out of the pack, there's just two laps to go. Get away stage. Back. Get way back. Get yeah. way back in case something happens. You have some time to maneuver. That comes on the final stage, the final lap of stage number two. Just about to say these guys have have been racing hard, and we only had one caution up to that point, and that was for the stage break. See the damage on the Gillen truck there in the right rear quarter panel. Stuart Friesen's truck obviously damaged way too much to continue. There's Tyler Ankrum to pit road for some damage repair. Didn't look like Gillen or the Ankrum truck were damaged enough to where they can't still be competitive. Unfortunate for Stuart Friesen brought a brand new sponsor this weekend and gear wrench truck looked really nice different look for him and now severe damage as uh, they work to get him out of his truck he is out it's hard to see but he's sitting on the ground there Stuart Friesen out of the truck it's like the AMR safety team is attending to Stuart yeah when he got out of the truck he looked, looked like he lost his breath a bit or something he bent over and this is hoping that we can get this truck repaired because no telling what's going to happen in this final stage. And if Zane can stay out of trouble, there's still a lot of racing left. So they continue working back in the garage for Zane Smith. <laughs> Parker Kligerman coming to get the checker flag. End of stage number two. Green white checker comes out. Great stage points for Sanchez, Josevar, Majeski, Rhodes. Corey Himes is going to get the one point for 10th. Sanchez, winner in stage one, second stage two. Some much needed points right mm -hmm. there for him. Before he heads on down to Homestead, his home track. He's from Miami. All right, let's see what happened that brought out this caution. Wow, those two orange and black trucks got together somehow. And watch Gillen come sliding through here. I think oh. he made contact with the 35 of Jake Garcia, I think, before he came into view. Not sure exactly. They were at the very tail end of the of the lead draft. How did that happen? That was a big hit for Stewart. Both those trucks spun independently, though, didn't they? That's kind of what it looked like. Although there maybe there might have been contact prior to us seeing that. Let's Here we see go. if we got another. Here we go. You see 
Oh, Stewart got together with Brett Eckes. Is it, was and, there a little shot from Eckes maybe into maybe. the right into the left rear quarter panel of Friesen's? That was wild for Friesen. No wonder he had the breath knocked out of him. Another look at it here. See Eckes all the way down on the apron. It makes me think there was contact between he and Stuart Friesen. See Chandler Smith going through the grass, narrowly missing the 52. When you have an accident like that, they take you to the infield care center. They'll go evaluate how Stuart's feeling, and we'll get your report on that. Yeah, we'll get an update on Stuart Friesen. Meanwhile, stage two is in the books. Parker Clickerman picks up the win. Stay with us. This is Craftsman Truck Series Racing from Talladega. Tomorrow, it's a huge doubleheader on Fox, starting with the Commanders as they take on Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, or other regional action. Then in America's Game of the Week, the Patriots battle Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, or it's Cardinals Niners. That's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. What do you think they're rooting for? They're, they're both in the NFC. I don't, know how, yeah, I don't know how you pull for both <laughs> of them. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Some Jets fans, Saints fans. Today, they are race fans. Yes, they are. What a beautiful scene that is. What stage points earned today after two stages? Nick Sanchez doing all he can do. 19 of 20 points earned so far. Carson Hosfar not far back. Yeah, Jeske also with a great day so far in the two stages with, with 14 points. Some of our playoff drivers have been shut out of points here in this race 
oh so critical stage points. Gone are the days of being able to ride around in the back at Talladega and make a move at the end to win the race, right, Michael? You got a race for those stage points, especially in a playoff race like this. Yeah, Phil and I probably between the two of us talked to every one of our playoff drivers, and that was <laughs> that was their opinion. You got to go, and we saw that. We saw that from all of our playoff guys trying to get that victory in the stage and those valuable points. So we're under caution for the second time for a big hit for Stuart Friesen. That brought out the green and white checkered, the end of stage number two. Parker Kligerman picked up that win. And now they're making their way to pit road. They're coming your way, Regan. Well, Jamie Coach, Carson Hosevar did everything he could there at the end to get as many stage points as he could. Didn't want to get stuck in the middle, so he opted to stay on the bottom line. Keep an eye on this pit stop for him. They had a little trouble getting the tires out of the wheel well on the first stop. That's the only concern they've got right now. Josh? Well, the team told Nick Sanchez that he's doing a great job in this race, getting much needed stage points. Once again, he said he's happy with that truck. They're going to get four tires on this thing and fuel. Freaking. Parker Klingerman, everything going right for him still right now. Truck just a little loose, wants a small adjustment for that. And a water bottle, they dumped it all over him last time. He's a little thirsty in that truck. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Talladega. Oh, Mid-70s. Differing strategies here. See four tires on Sanchez. Don on Colby Howard in that second position. Remember, Sanchez did not take tires at the end of the first stage. And it worked, good track position. Yep. Tire wear for Goodyear was fine. Now he's gonna have four fresh ones to go race them with to the checker. And you see Parker Kligerman took four tires as well. Final stage coming up next, it's Talladega. It doesn't get better than this, promise you that. Who will take it? Maybe Ben Rhodes.
Talladega Super Speedway, a place where things can change in an instant. And that's a dangerous game to play. It's making it three wide. Holy cow, that was bad. We're acting behind them. So much action, so much fun. These drivers are going to have their hands full today. Strap in and enjoy the ride. Well, we've certainly been enjoying the ride the fans have and hope you have at home. And welcome you back to the Love's RV Stop 250. Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip with you. Josh Sims, Regan Smith, covering all the action on pit road. This is a massive facility, isn't it? Look at all of that ground, room, people. It's the, the best party in NASCAR, <laughs> hands down. It so much that. to do, incredible racing. As you see the 2023 playoff points, cutoff line there. <laughs> and that's as they run on the racetrack. I laugh because Michael hates that word, but it's true. That's what it is right now. It's the cutoff line right now. Nick Sanchez, four below, and that man. Frustration. It's a tough day. Hasn't for been him. a good day. Yeah. That's Zane Smith, defending series champion, back in the garage. They continue to work. They do intend to get back out, hopefully gain some more points for him. But as you mentioned, Phil, you said it right when he went to the garage. It is a must win situation for Zane Smith when we go to Homestead. Yeah, I think so. And like Michael said, hey, the rest of our playoff drivers could have trouble too before the end of this race. <laughs> We've seen that over the last two, three, four years anyway. So, uh, but uh, tough. Uh, most important thing for Zane Smith is that crewman's okay. Yeah, that's that was that was really scary. What about that front row? We've got both grays. Couple brothers up there. They're gonna bring this thing to the green. Will we see what Joy Logano coined as the dipsy doodle or the <laughs> switcheroo, whatever it is. <laughs> you think the black truck will get in front of the red truck uh, via team orders? Yes. Me too. Yes. But you gotta be careful with this game. We saw it in the Daytona 500. Sometimes you try to set it up like that and that second row could get the jump and uh, make you wish you hadn't done the old dipsy doo. These Gray brothers can't shake each other. They always find one another, whether it's qualifying or in race. On the front row right now, Tanner Gray, the older brother at 24 years old. Younger brother, Taylor Gray, in the 18. Side by side, they go, waiting for the green flag. If they don't do the dipsy do, then it's going to be a tough Thanksgiving around the Gray household. And that's only a month or so away. We've got to be <laughs> cognizant of this. All Tricon Garage up front, the brothers side by side. Chase Purdy back in the mix with a nice push on the outside. Not going to happen. Not going to do it. No switcheroo. Oh, look at this mess. Third lane up top. We've seen this on the restarts today. Four lane. Was Hosebar going to make a four, fourth lane? A lot of movement. This is such a great shot. Everything we saw about give and take, even if you didn't think you saw any, it was going on. Every lap that goes by, that's going out the window. Just, it just ratchets up every lap we get closer to the end. Tanner Gray did a great job on that restart. He holds on to the lead. Colby Howard in the nine just behind him. And Corey Heim haven't talked a whole lot about him today. And there is Nick Sanchez. He's been running top five all day long. He's led the most laps today. What about Clearman in that tide ride? He just won that second stage, and look, he's on the third lane, all the way back outside the top 20 at this point in the race. Can he make his way back through this snarling pack and have a chance to win? We talked to Grant Enfinger early. He knows how critical stage points were. He's been shut out so far. He's been trying to make something happen. Started back in 24th, 25th, and actually hasn't been able to move that much forward. He was knocking on the door of the top 10. Look at this 42. You talked about four wide, Phil. There it is, right around Majeski. Ty lost his momentum. See what we see when we get on board with Carson. So there's a lane up there. <laughs> Wasn't much of one, was it? <laughs> Tanner Gray continues to check out up front. Sanchez jumped out of line a couple of laps ago, making that outside line work. We know how strong that car, that truck has been, excuse me, and the four truck as well. Chase Purdy, our upholstered are now lined up behind his quasi-teammate, Nick Sanchez. 
We're embracing with that alliance with Kyle Busch Motorsports. Kyle Busch Motorsports behind him. Kyle has three more races. Well, really, two and a half more races to call it KBM. New ownership next year. What about, we talked about the Dipsy Doodle. Tanner Gray's up front. Taylor, his brother, man, it was a rough restart for him after not getting any help on that start. He's all the way back to the 17th position right now. Nice outside line here. Christian Eckes right now third in that line. See Brett Moffitt, we haven't talked a lot about Brett making a rare start here in the truck series. He's fourth truck in line and that red and black number 34. A couple of updates on truckers that are out. David Gilliland in the one was checked and released from the infield care center. The 52 was Stuart Friesen and looked like he was in some pain. He has been transported to a local hospital for further evaluation. Tanner Gray continues to lead here at Talladega. Stay with us. 45 laps to go. Who will it be? Back at Talladega, a caution is out for the third time and problems for one of our playoff drivers, Grant Enfinger, involved in a four truck spin and crash. There's damage throughout. You see Tyler Ankrum probably got the worst end of it, but Grant Enfinger, that front end of that truck doesn't look too good. You know, we were just talking about the gray that was back in 17th. This is about where it starts. Tanner Gray gets a bit of a shove from behind. Right in front of the Tide truck. That's the truck that's going to run to the back of Taylor Gray. It's going to turn him into the 16 truck of Tyler Ankerman. He, in turn, catches the 88 of Matt Crafton. You see Grant with absolutely nowhere to go. He runs into the side of Taylor Gray. You see Kligerman slipping through again in that bright orange truck. Was it the 41 truck maybe of Bailey Curry that was behind it's the just it's so hard to see. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. That's the 41. Yep. Bam. Just lost the momentum off the corner. 
you can't see that well out the trucks because of the one in front of you, and he just didn't have an idea that they were going to stack up like that. And it's a chain reaction. The, you know, the first truck that sees them slows down, slow down has a good chance at it. The farther back you go, the harder it is. Did Matt Crafton slip through this? No, he has, he has some damage. Damage on the left rear there. He's going to get caught by Ankrum right there as Ankrum comes back across the racetrack. Ankrum's going to make some contact with the inside safer barrier as well. Tom Ajeski with some damage. I thought maybe he got through there unscathed. Great heads up move for him, but obviously some damage to the right front. For Ty Majeski. Grant Enfinger had qualified mid pack, made up some great gains. He wasn't concerned about starting back there, obviously, got up front. But now serious damage. I think Majeski thinks his team thinks, well, we can run second with this thing. We can, yeah, we get it in the draft. We can hang hard to right lead, but we can sure push. Here's some more damage, though. I think we've got pretty severe on the left front. And you see the right, right front tire is flat right now. Grant's already lost one lap. They they turned him loose so he would not lose a second lap on pit road. Here comes some of the leaders or excuse me, some of the players, because Grant, excuse me, Kligerman was back right there where that crash happened. Probably just taking a taking a Hail Mary here, Regan, bringing it to pit road at this point. Yeah, Michael, and I think for a number of these guys that are pitting right now, not only a Hail Mary, but also thinking about further down in the race, they take the tires right now, take a little bit of fuel, may make that final stop of the race shorter. I don't know that anybody can make it from this point on right now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think 40 laps is 41 laps is a little bit out of the out of the realm. But that's exactly what we talked about before, Michael. You can spend less time on pit road right. on your next pit stop, just like Regan was talking about. No tires probably then, just a splash. Exactly. Of yeah. How will that all play out? How do they come to pit road under green? When do they make those decisions? There's a lot of strategy that's going to go in to these last 30 some laps. Another look at what brought out the last caution for us here. Eight trucks in all with some damage. Stay with us, drop the green flag. I'm sure you just.
Welcome back to the Love's RV Stop 250, where we're under caution for the third time today. Tanner Gray shown as the leader. We'll have 40 laps to go. When we get back to green flag racing, now trouble for a couple playoff drivers today. We just talked about Grant Enfinger. He is in the free pass position. He's one lap down, but he's got a lot of damage. But it's all been about Zane Smith. He's been back in the garage for some time now as they continue to work on it. And he's sitting there. Let's just dial him up. What do you think? Let's, let's try it. Hey, Zane Smith, this is a Fox booth. You got a copy? Gotcha. Buddy, we see your truck uh, back in the garage area working on what What happened to that thing? Yeah, I mean, first off, uh, huge. I haven't been able to see him yet, but hope uh, whoever it was on my pit crew I hit, um, feel terrible about that, but um, so that wasn't a great start. And then uh, I guess after that, once I rolled off of pit road uh, down the back stretch, my clutch was slipping and it got worse and worse and worse until I could hardly even do quarter throttle. So uh, fighting that, changing um, as much as we can right now to, to get back out there and uh, get back rolling. But just a, such a bummer. So probably a much better situation here in a couple weeks. All right, buddy, we appreciate you talking to us. And we did talk to Charles Plank, your tire carrier, and he uh, he was all smiling and all good to go. So uh, that was good news. But uh, tough break for you guys. And go get him at Homestead, buddy. Yeah. Let's see. Frustration. Take a look again. Talked about his tire carrier. Look at that. Heads up. Two tires in his arms. Gets drilled. All that damage on the right rear. He reacted so athletically he dropped one of the tires he said I tried to jump the truck he did everything he could over 50 pounds per tire by the way uh, carrying about 100 pounds right there that young man is tougher than that truck I'm telling you right now <laughs> look at the dent he put in yeah. it stellar athlete Josh talked to him and he was smiling had a fat lip a little bit of blood on there but he said I can't wait to go for the next stop yeah so glad he's okay unfortunately they haven't had a second stop because they had further issues Regan well, Jamie, just updating one of our playoff drivers, Carson Hosafar, the second time by when pits were open, they decided to go ahead and pit, take two right side tires, get a full fuel load on that truck, check with Kruchi Phil Gould to make sure everything was okay. He said, we just didn't want to risk getting any damage on pit road. They came back as we got the one to go and topped off. Look for them to be one of those trucks with a little bit more fuel, maybe a little shorter pit stop at the end also. Interesting. You think, I mean, what, what's their strategy at this point? He can't make it to the end. Can no, he? but he knows he's got more fuel and he's got tires. His stop's going to be quicker. I'm sure he'll ride. I, I, I would guess Carson will try to go to the, to the front of this pack. He's not just going to ride in the back, but when it comes time to pit, when they make the green flat pick stop, and if they do so it, with a manufacturer alliance, that means when he comes to pit road, he doesn't have to stay there so long. Tonight on Fox, Corey Seager leads the Rangers against the Mariners in a final showdown before the postseason. Or the newly crowned AL East champion Orioles take on the Red Sox. It all begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific tonight on Fox. Fox is a busy place to be. It's a great time to be at Fox, right? We've got NFL, we've got NASCAR, we've got playoffs right now for the truck series. You can see them see them shaking the truck trying to make sure they get every ounce of fuel in it. Once you've made your bed you might as well just go ahead and keep topping off every single lap and gives Majeski time more time for his guys to work on that right front fender. One one crew member was shaking the truck and one of them was shaking his groove way. thing. They were dancing. It looked like a party down he there. He was on like Pero. their cheerleader. Keep shaking boys. Let's go. So far on the day, Nick Sanchez has led the most laps, 24. Parker Kligerman, 10. Let's just, that was good. See him on the right? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> that's Let's what go. that's all about. Add the fuel, shake the truck. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe it's his birthday. You never know. <laughs> Could be. Could be. They're having fun. Like you guys just set up there in a good spot. Drive to the front. Let's lead this thing. We'll pit when we need to. 17 stage points so far today for Osavar. It's been a good year for Carson Hosabar. Yeah, I mean, we got really good mileage the first stage because we're doing a lot of lifts and not as good second stage because we were leading more. So we'd be right at the number at our best mileage there. Okay, then. 
think they maybe can stretch it to the checker, but I got an idea. Could be another caution, you think? That, How often suspicion. do we stop this race at the scheduled distance? Uh, rarely, <laughs> especially here. And that's Phil Gould, you just heard, talking scenario. It'll be fun. Here we go. Grand Enfinger right now is still the only truck one lap down, so he needs a quick caution. Carson get him Hosevar. back on lead lap. Yeah, Carson Osvar just ahead of him in the 26th spot. So be fun to watch what he can do driving through the pack. See how far forward he can get as Tanner Gray will lead Nick Sanchez in the outside line. Green flag once again. Sanchez laying back to that four truck. You saw how Gray got the break, but they were formed up on the outside and finally Christian Eckes up here in the front. Yeah, Eckes has been a good pusher, too. He's, He's been trying and trying, trying to make that third lane work. Finally has some good track position now and has Brett Moffitt right behind him. I don't think we've seen Christian Eckes on the bottom line once today. I don't think he has either. We haven't seen him up this close to the front in quite some time, and he's got a really fast Chevy there. A lot of bump drafting going on. You can see those trucks moving all over the racetrack. Nick Sanchez won the first stage today, finished second in stage number two. Here he is trying to take the lead once again. Let's give a shout to Colby Howard, too. He's done a really nice job since the end of that second stage with good track position and keeping that good track position. Yeah, he's been a player all day long. Saw him run really well at Daytona. He's got a lot of speed in that nine truck, and it's good to see him up front today. Colby Howard out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, the 21-year-old. You mentioned his great run at Daytona, finished fourth there. It gives you some confidence when you're going to come back to a super speedway race like this. See these guys pushing down the back stretch. You can follow. Oh. Trouble on the back Bailey again, the 41. Curry. Tyler Hill, the 56 truck. You were caution right about uh, ca another caution, Mike. Hey, Phil. I think there might be another one after this one. <laughs> you, were, you weren't even counting this one? This wasn't the one I was thinking of. Bailey Curry there with some big damage to the left front. Now this will give these teams an opportunity if they so choose to come to, down to pit road again. It's going to be a little bit outside their window, but enough close enough. I think they would all try it. And the reason why is because of the caution flags. Watch the 23 Grand Enfinger with all that damage right there in the middle. He's pushed around. He actually gets into Bailey Curry and turns him around. Bailey takes Tyler Hill and Grant. If, if they don't deem him part of the caution, he will get the free pass. He kept it going straight. Look, there's a big movement around him, and it just maybe got up the, right, up the wrong direction. Hill did a, did a nice job of hanging on to that truck. NASCAR's yeah. saying what, Phil? The 23 was in the free pass position, but because he was involved in the caution, he doesn't get that free pass. And I can imagine Grant would say, what? What do you mean I wasn't in any wreck? They hit me. <laughs> oh, you see him. He actually swerved left to avoid the 41 of Bailey Curry and then looked like Grant maybe lost control of that and then got back into the 41 of Bailey Curry. Here comes Bailey up out of that 41 truck. Hosevar now will hope, Phil, that everybody decides it's time to pit close enough to their window and the more caution laps obviously the better gas mileage so we're getting to a point where I think we will see much of our leaders pit would be my guess but I've been wrong before. Carson Hosevar made up about nine positions before that caution came out Let's see 35 laps to go a reminder the drivers in gold those are the playoff drivers and where they run. Corey Heim highlighted in green because he's already punched his ticket to the championship race in Arizona. As you see, the drivers making their way down pit road. Could this be the final stop? Regan. Well, the 11 of Corey Heim thought about doing this last time and potentially stretching it. Now with this caution, it was a no-brainer. They're going to pit, get fuel for this truck, and try to stretch it to the end. Josh? A fuel only stop for the two. They told Nick Sanchez, when you feel a beat on the hood, go. Just five seconds of fuel for the two, Regan. Christian Eckes rebounded nicely after the trouble earlier in the race. There was no damage that they needed to worry about on the right front. The truck has been slimy all day long and trouble for him getting through traffic. Just can't make moves. Carson Hosevar 
That plan worked out well for that team. I talked about less fuel going into that truck. They got just a couple of seconds of fuel and picked up 11 spots. You see just two drivers in the top 10 there decided to take tires. This is why we're under caution. Once again, stay with us. Coming up next on FS1, we've got Baylor taking on UCF. Then at 7, catch Iowa State as they battle 14th ranked Oklahoma. And at 10.30, it's Nevada versus Fresno State. It's all right here on FS1. Is that your team, Nevada? The Wolfpack. UNLV was kind of my team. Was it? From yeah. Vegas. Yeah. We're a, we're a pack. But I went to San Diego State, so, you know, I'll claim wherever I am, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we're a pack of three. We are a pack of three. We like to travel in packs, but I think you're kind of lone wolf sometimes, Michael. No, I used to be. Now I'm, now I'm a team guy. You're a team guy. I like it. I appreciate it. Appreciate you watching us. It's been fun today. Oh, man. So many storylines that are still yet to develop. A couple trucks stayed out there. Brett Holmes in the 32, Jack Wood in the 51. They last pitted on lap 56. That means 38 laps till the end. I mean, it, with all these caution laps, and if they do a good job of saving fuel, but but if Brett Holmes gets the lead and is out front, you're going to get worse fuel mileage leading. So I believe Brett Holmes has about 65 members of his family and his friends <laughs> here cheering him on. Grew up 20 minutes from this racetrack. He's leading the race right now. Nick Sanchez to the outside. It's worth any type of gamble for Brett Holmes. Oh, he gets shoved. Can he get it back up on the track? Look at that mess behind him. He gets back up on the track. How about Brett Moffitt in the 34 has come to the party with a nice push to Nick Sanchez. How about Chandler Smith, another Xfinity interloper right behind Brett Moffitt. And a push to Brett Moffitt down the back stretch. A big push. They're going straight to the lead. Brett Moffitt takes the lead. 25 at Chandler Smith. What about Carson Hosevar? Oh! Nick Sanchez with some contact goes down below the yellow line, back up the track. He had contact from Brett Holmes. 
great save by Nick Sanchez. Does he feel like he has a flat tire now? Trouble. Yeah, we have to do a pass throw for laying back. Get to the bottom here. Get to the bottom. Restart violation for Nick Sanchez. Laying back. We've seen a couple of restart violations for guys changing lanes before the green flag for the start line. Remember, we're a long way from the start finish line. So Nick Sanchez will serve that penalty, the pass through as Brett Moffitt leads here. The 2018 Truck Series champion came here as a teammate of Zane Smith, perhaps auditioning to take over that truck for Zane next year. They haven't announced anybody yet. Zane Smith will be moving up to the Cup Series. He signed with Track House and they made a deal with Spires. So we'll see Zane moving up to the Cup Series. And another frustration for him being back in the garage. He wants to go out, go out a champion. Well, he can do that. He still has a chance, <laughs> but it's a must win at Homestead. Let's see if we can see what NASCAR deemed restart violation. He definitely did did not change lanes. He's laying back. Yeah, that's, he's supposed to come to the start finish line side by side with the inside truck. Didn't do so to get that big push from behind. NASCAR said you can't lay back that far. These guys are all learning as they go. You know, that, that's something that I haven't seen called. That was a bit of a questionable call. I think if you ask me, I haven't seen that call. He wasn't even a full truck length behind. It didn't look like. Bailey Curry in the 41 has been checked and released from the infield care center. What about our leader? Well, Brett Moffitt. How about that? Welcome back to the Craftsman Truck Series. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the front of the pack. Too. Here comes Eckes on the outside with a good push from Purdy. Eckes been on that outside line all day long. Hasn't led a lap though yet today. You know what that makes his job today, running up there, that's harder. I mean, you get down there on the bottom line and just hang there, you got protection on the bottom. He's been all over this racetrack with no protection. Now the leader swings up in front of him. You're just tuning in. You're saying, what in the world? Chandler Smith in the 25. That was Matt Benedetto the last two seasons. He announced a couple of weeks ago he wouldn't return to the team next year. Well, the team and their sponsors talked, and they decided they wanted to make a change before that. So with three races remaining, Matt Benedetto is out, and Chandler Smith got the call. Here he is trying to lead laps here at Talladega. Well, that didn't work for Christian Eckes. Uh, I didn't like that move. No, trying to jump around Moff and made it three wide. Let's get an update on our leader, Josh. Yeah, for Brett Moffitt, the goal going into the race was to do all he could to help the 38 get a win to help him advance in the playoffs. But with the 38 out, remember the 34 for Brett Moffitt, the future is uncertain. And he also has to worry about himself and try to secure a ride for the future. So right now having a really good race and looking to uh, turn some heads out there today, guys. What a move that was. <laughs> Purdy to the bottom. Made the pass for the lead on Moffitt. Purdy is here to play today. Chase Purdy, your leader, Chandler Smith, Brett Moffitt, Carson Hosevar. We're going to step aside, but you won't miss a thing as we go side by side.
Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway, where we're live for the Love's RV Stop 250. Brett Moffitt continues to lead here. First start of the year. It's got to feel good to be out front. Man, it's hard to do what he's doing, though, crossing over from lane to lane. And you could see it bit him there. Purdy had the run to the bottom and just shucked Brett Moffitt from the lead. And I think it's harder in these trucks because they punch such a big hole in the air than it would be for the Cup cars or the Xfinity cars. What about Jake Drew? Let's give a shout out to that young man in the 61 truck. Third one on the bottom, running inside the top five. And I also want to give a shout out to Corey Heim. He's locked in. He's racing for a championship. He says, I want a checkered flag. I don't care about laying back. That shows you the spirit of that young man. Jake Drew has made a handful of starts this year. Arkham Menards West champion last season. Moffitt hanging in there. A little bit of help from Ben Rose. You see the red number 99. Here comes Matt Crafton. What did he spin out just a little while ago? Now he's in the middle of the top 10. Never won here. Not been one of his better tracks. I think his fourth is his best finish. And he's raced in every race we've ever had here at Talladega. He's in a position today. It's the most volatile that front row has been. We've seen a lot of huge runs by Brett up the outside. And then they switched it around. Brett was on the inside, chased Purdy up. A lot of runs toward the front. Really impressed with what Chase Purdy has done the last few weeks. Got his first career pole just a couple of races ago at Kansas. The 51 of Jack Wood. See the damage. It's all falling apart, and that'll bring out the caution for the fifth time. That'd be a great break for all these teams that are a little bit iffy on fuel. These caution laps will make sure that they will get them in their window. And a huge break for Grant Enfinger. He's the first truck a lap down. He'll get right back into the hunt. Looking to pick up some positions right now as they run. He's in a bit of a bind coming racing for a championship. And Nick Sanchez, too. Remember, he made that pit stop for a penalty. He now will get back on the back to the tail end of the field. He did not go a lap down. Jeff Hensley says, all right, I'll take it. We're back in the mix. Got our lap back. Jack Wood doing a great job, but just a little bit of damage, and away goes that hood. Right, nice, 12th at the time. Nice job by all the trucks around him not to uh, overreact, keep everybody going in the right direction. And you see the reason that NASCAR had to throw the caution flag. You see all the debris from that hood flying all over the racetrack. Tanner Gray, oh, just squeezes to the bottom. It's been a wild one so far. 22 laps to go from Talladega. You don't want to miss it. Can Chase Purdy hang on or somebody else?
19 laps to go here for the Craftsman Truck Series at Talladega. This isn't the only race tonight on FS2. It's the Arkham Menard Series from Salem Speedway, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And I believe Jesse Love will officially be the champion. Once he cranks his engines, it's, it's, it's going to be all over. What an amazing season. He's had nine wins so far in 18 races. Two more to go here in Toledo next week. Salem, I mean, here. And next week will be awesome. We'll cover that and celebrate the champion and the season that was in the Arkham Menard Series. We've got some work to do, though. We got a lot of work to do and a lot of <laughs> a lot of action to cover. This is like a throwback right here with Chase Purdy. We've got Chandler Smith, Brett Moffitt up front. Good to see those guys back running. See if they can steal the win here today. Ben Rhodes with his teammate Matt Crafton with damage right behind him. Ben Rhodes has had a pretty smooth day. Don't want to jinx him. A little pushing and shoving there on the restart. We got trucks out of line. Oh, Chase Purdy. With an issue. Oh, Did no. he just get pushed out of line? Does he have a problem? No, there's Something's definitely wrong. something going wrong. And it's more than a flat tire. He is off the pace. Chase Purdy was the leader, led 11 laps today from the pole. He is off the pace. Brett Moffitt up front. Look at Matt Crafton. You mentioned he was involved in that spin just 30 minutes ago. Now he's up here battling for the lead. He's got a good push from Brett Holmes. They can push, but they can't lock bumpers. Here comes Kobe Howard in that white truck. See if we can see what happened on this restart, Adam. He just, did, he just didn't go. He recognized, I think, that there was something wrong. And this makes a mess of this restart. That's the 42 not getting, not changing lanes. He stayed behind the 11. That was a smart heads up move. We've had five restarts and we three of them, there's been issues. That could have been big. Let's listen to Chase Purdy's radio. Truck shut off. It's dead. Blue switch back up, blue switch back up. Turn the main switch on, turn the, put the main switch back on. All right, we're good, blue switch killed it. Could have just shut off, and what Jimmy Villeneuve, his crew chief, was telling him to recycle it. These are fuel-injected engines with engine control units. So he told him to recycle it, turn the power off, turn it back on. He's back going now. Another guy that's back going is Parker Clearman in that Tide truck. He's been near the front all day long, through some strategy, fell way back, and now he's climbed back inside the top ten. Nobody in this field has any more experience than Matt Crafton. Full time here in the truck series, run every race since the beginning. Actually, the very last race of 2000. Parker Kligerman, a two time winner here at Talladega, he runs full time in the Xfinity Series. Going for a championship right now. And the Xfinity Series is off, so why not jump in a truck? How about Christian Eckes right now lined up on that inside in third? Remember his average finish for the four races in the playoffs, 2.0. He's doing worse than that right now, running third. And he's down on the bottom of the track. He's got to be confused. <laughs> Hadn't been down there all day long. He, he didn't even realize there was a double yellow line down there. And now he's shoving right onto the back of Ben Rhodes. What a great race. As they cross the start-finish line, this is the Craftsman Truck Series. 15 to go as they wreck Raja Karuth goes around. That'll bring out the caution. Sixth time today. Did you see while Raja was spinning, Grant Enfinger came way down low. Can't see a lot with all the smoke that goes on, and Grant was right on top of Raja. Raja was 17th at the time of this incident. So the damage to the left front corner of Raja's truck. He can pull that out get back in battle. Another opportunity for these drivers to save some more fuel. Let's see if we can take a look back at what happened. You see him up at the top of the racetrack. That's Carson Hosobar right behind him. Just a push gone bad as you saw the 30 of Vargas get involved in that. Got into the outside wall then kept it straight. Watch is that. Oh that's a shame. Had no idea that was coming. Ryan Vargas didn't. No, and he was solidly inside the top 20. Been doing a great job all day in that 30 truck. Just minding his own business and right there. Just a little bit of push. They're, they're not straight. The trial is not straight here. 
See Grant Enfinger way down there, just trying to get even lower to get around Raja. Fortunately, makes it through without any damage. Grant's really recovered nicely. He's now up just outside the top 20 with a tremendous amount of damage to that truck, but he got his lap back. I think that might have ended Vargas's day because that was a big contact on the outside. And he had done such a great job hanging in there, getting laps, unfortunately in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there he is, Zane Smith has been back in the garage for the better part of this race. He is back out on track. So people wondering, after missing all these laps, why in the world would you work so hard to come back out with 15 laps to go? Well, in two more laps, he's gonna gain two spots. So every spot's a point, and you never know what you're gonna need when you get down to Miami to get into the championship four. Talk about footwork. Do you believe in that, how busy he was? A lot goes on inside that cockpit that you can't tell by sitting in the grandstands or sometimes from even watching on TV. Everything that goes into winning a NASCAR race. I'm telling you, that was as fancy footwork as I've seen since Michael was on Dancing with the Stars. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Minus I, the bikini top. Yeah. I mean, you guys I, had the same footwork. I was really something, wasn't I? <laughs> 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 on that note, we're going to step aside. <laughs> 14 laps to go here for the Truck Series. Just a gorgeous day here in Talladega. This is the place you want to be. Big party infield, awesome racing on the track. Cup Series racing tomorrow. And it's the playoffs, baby. As if racing wasn't more you know, exciting enough, we add the uh, playoff element to it. And it's interesting how things shake out. You know, we've talked about a playoff driver has never won this race in the playoffs. Last year, it was this guy. It was the 25 team with Matt Benedetto behind the wheel that went to victory lane. And so look at the last five winners. It's amazing. Each one of these drivers only led one lap, and so that was the last lap. Part so, of the last lap. Yeah, so yeah. as we look at the running order right now, do you pick your favorite 
Someone that hasn't led a lap yet? Uh, well, Brett Moffitt is the only driver right now in the top seven that has led a lap today. So we have a lot of choices for drivers that have not led today. But I really like Christian Eckes. I think that truck has been strong. Right now he has the best track position that he's had of this entire race. He doesn't have to go to the outside like he's been the entire race. So I like Eckes. And man, has he been on fire in the playoffs. Yeah, you saw there on the 25, Matt Benedetto won. The best playoff driver was Ben Rhodes. There's Ben Rhodes. Been an eventful day for the 99 and a really good spot here late, though. Won at Daytona before, knows how to get it done on these big tracks. He'll be a tough guy to beat. Let's listen to what Ben has to say. 34 spotter, um, and that we were willing to push all we could um, for as long as we could. We need to either win this thing or run second. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good to me. If Rich back for the second race, second time around with Ben, but what are you telling him in terms of closing this thing out and getting what you need at the end? Well, right now we're just focused on getting a good finish. We're above the cut line right now, going to Homestead, getting ourselves a chance. I think we have a really good F-150, so we can push our teammate here, or our manufacturer teammate here, and moff it a little bit, and then we'll settle the thing out with one to go. Thanks, and good luck the rest of the way, Rich. I like seeing those two back together. Me too. They had such a chemistry together. Won the championship back in 2021, and crew chief swaps here and there with this team, and nothing's really stuck until two races ago. They brought back Rich Lucius. He was with Haley Deegan this year, and to see what they can do here, see if they can make it and maybe get themselves another championship. It's done a great job here. This race, he's earned nine stage points so far but in a great position as a four teammate, as he was talking about Brett Moffat, who really knows his way around these, uh, these super speedways. A lot of experience, even though he hasn't run a truck race in a while. Pretty guess, formidable pair. Guess who slipped up to the outside on this restart? Should be no surprise, right? Right. Christian Eckes, Christian Eckes <laughs> decided to go up top, and we heard Ben Rhodes said, I'll push the 34. That sounds like a plan to me. He rolled right in behind. Brett Moffitt. How about we haven't talked a, a lot about Dean Thompson. Remember had to start this race from the back of the pack. He would running in the fourth spot when this caution came out. You see him lined up third on the inside line. And another one of the trucks from Tricon Garage. And just behind him's Corey Heim. We know he's just racing for a checker flag. Knows he's going to Phoenix to run for a championship. And then behind Heim. Daniel Dye has made his way into the top 10. So he's one of those guys that would like to be a first time winner. He wouldn't care if he only led one lap, would he, Phil? Not at all. Not at all. Number 43 lined up on the bottom of the racetrack. Daniel There's Dye with a little bit of news, by the way. This week, McAnally Hilgeman Racing announced that uh, Daniel Dye moving on board. So he'll be teammates with Christian Eckes next year. They hope to run three trucks, hoping Jake Garcia will come back. But if not, they are looking. So great things happening over there, and we've seen it with Christian Eckes. Eckes comes in, they build the team around him. Three wins this year. You mentioned it, his average finish of second, the best ever through four races in the playoffs. And now here he is with the chance to win yet again, restarting here on the outside front row. It's going to be 10 to go. Can we get through this without another caution? Michael said, no. <laughs> he whispered, no. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but I don't think so, <laughs> Phil. Watch that tide rod. He's going to be strong in these closing laps. Brett Moffitt strong, too, on the inside. He'll lead Ben Rhodes. Christian Eckes with a good push from Chandler Smith on the outside. Nice organization on that inside. Now that was one of the cleanest restarts we've seen today. And it paid off for Ben Rhodes to get right behind Moffitt. Dean Thompson pulls right up to the tailgate of the 99 of Rhodes on the inside. Look at him, four wide mid pack. Is that Chase Purdy? It is. Getting him four wide. Now that he's got his truck cranked back up. He's playing on going straight to the front. Yeah, Hosovar on the outside as well. Man, Parker Quigerman's really dropped on this restart. I said, watch the time. Colby Howard in the nine. Chase Purdy, you just mentioned him, got back in traffic after that issue on the last restart. That'll bring out the caution for the seventh time today. Hard, hard contact for Chase Purdy. Colby Howard do, did some 360s, and he didn't get any damage in that nine truck. 
He was part of that initial contact it looked like. There's the nine. Can he get it cranked up? Oh, yeah. Chase Purdy was your pole sitter today, led 11 laps. Second to last restart, had that issue ducked below the yellow line and just said it shut off. Good to see him moving around and getting out of that truck. That was a hard lick, as you can tell by all the damage. Unfortunate, he calls this his home track. He's from Mississippi. But he's got Bama buggies on his ride. Yeah, he does. What a great young man, fun spirit, had an awesome race going, and unfortunately it all ended here with the inside of 10 to go. Yeah, and had it not been for that truck dying on him, he probably would not have been that far back. See if we can figure out what happened. You see he's on the inside of Ooh. Colby Howard. Just Look, ran out of room. Yeah, Colby maybe came down a little bit. Looks like he got squeezed out. Yeah. How did Colby Howard avoid? How did everybody avoid Colby Howard? Yes. Exactly. The rest of the I field. Mean, the truck is in perfect condition after all that. Which is probably a situation where you put your nose a bit where looked like maybe even Chase or excuse, maybe Chase was even trying to get himself out of that position. He he noticed the hole closing up, but it was just too little, too late. Yeah. Colby may not even have realized that Chase had tried to go to the middle there. It's going to be result in a DNF for Chase Purdy, unfortunately, after such a great run. Yeah, he's trying to squeeze in a hole that might watch the film and say I shouldn't have done that, but it's late. And these guys are going to get desperate. 18 of 36 drivers in the field today involved in an accident. Yeah, that just goes along with it. We had 26, I think, involved in accidents two years ago. And 20 last year, so we're yeah. right on par. Eight laps to go. The fans are ready. Who will it be? Christian Eckes in control right now. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway for the Love's RV Stop 250. Oh boy. There's a lot to go on in the last few laps of this race and these fans. Look at that setup. Have turned out to Careful just up there, boys. enjoy the weekend. They constructed that themselves, didn't they? There's all kinds of constructing going on in there. <laughs> There's bars when you walk around. 
Yeah. There's Talladega Boulevard is about as wild as it gets. It is. I think New Orleans is fun. You should go <laughs> to the infield at Talladega. So Christian Eckes shown as the leader. Chandler Smith, Brett Moffitt, Ben Rhodes, Dean Thompson is your top five. You can see now there's a reason that uh, Chandler Smith and Brett Moffitt were picked by those teams to come here. Get down towards the end of the race inside of 10 to go and they find themselves up in the top three. We're going to ride around another lap as NASCAR cleans the place up. Carson Hosefar's had an interesting run here over the last few laps up front. And then got mired back in traffic and a little contact here. This, this is his most recent rep right here. Go way to the inside. See Corey Roper, that 0-4 right behind. Right behind him went through the grass to avoid that. See if we can try to talk to Carson with see what he has in mind. Carson Hosevar, it's Waltrip and the team with Fox. Do you copy? He's really working that saving fuel, fuel situation. Saving fuel. Knows how important that is. Might not have time to mess with this. Let's see if we can try it one more time, Mike. Let's try it. Hey, Carson, it's uh, Michael Waltrip and the Fox team. Do you copy? Hey, Carson, it's Waltrip and the Fox team. Do you copy? Yeah, guys. A lot of people don't know what all goes on under caution, but we're watching your feet, huh, buddy? We're watching your feet, your hands, your saving fuel. You got a lot going on. Can you rally through this field and put your 42 in victory lane today? Uh, but we're going to try. Uh, we got a long ways to go, a little bit here with as few laps as there is. But um, we have a fast out rod, just kind of got stuck behind on that one restart. But um, yeah, it's just sort of it's sort of tough when they're everybody's going and, and they're just kind of moving lanes and getting clogged up. Um, not enough power really to make the top of three work. The second um, someone comes up, you kind of get bogged down and you lose your momentum. But um, yeah, we got a really fast hot rod. It's just uh, hopefully they make a few mistakes in front of me and we can take advantage. Well, I just want you to watch the replay of this race. Your feet, feet footwork is fantastic. Oh, I appreciate that, Michael. I, uh, I didn't think y'all would see a lot. I mean, it's basically wide open, but I guess there's more that meets the eye even uh, that we realize. All right, buddy. Thanks for your time. Close her out. And that is Carson Hosvar live in your living rooms. <laughs> Puts his visor up. He turns and looks right at you. But um, if you're wondering, yes, they are stopped on the racetrack. That's why he's able to move his feet around and play to the camera and chat with us because we've got pretty big cleanup right now. Yeah, I'm really glad that NASCAR does this instead of letting these trucks ride around on the caution. We get down towards the end. Right now we're showing six laps to go. The last time that the last green flag here was more than two laps was 2008, 15 years ago. So what you're saying is there's another caution. His historically, historically speaking. Historically. We'll uh -huh. see. They were pretty good in stage number one today. We'll see if we can get back to it. We'll step aside. You stay with us for the finish here at Talladega.
Here with Jeff Hensley, crew chief of the 23 at Brand Enfinger. It's been a very eventful day for you guys. What have you been telling your driver about staying in it and still having a shot to get back above the cut line? Well, I mean, we're just trying to do the best we can with our champion equipment Chevrolet here. It's just uh, every time we look like we're getting in a spot where we could, you know, make a little bit of hay, we get hung out and then we got in a wreck there, got some damage. And I mean, it's Talladega, anything can happen here. But the guys have done an excellent job over the wall trying to get the thing patched up. Uh, it closed up the grill work when we when we hit and we're running hot. So we got that open back up, did a little redneck engineering on that to get it back open. And, uh, you know, just trying to keep the fenders off the tires and see what happens. I mean, we're back to 16th and, but it's not the day we wanted, but we haven't given up yet. It's still five laps to go. So we'll see what happens. Thanks, Jeff. At least five laps to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Jeff Hensley said it there. I mean, the, the work that they put into this truck just to be able to run where he is and, and fight and claw their way back, he's not out of it. But I'm telling you, Phil, he can run in the top five with this truck if he puts himself in the right positions. Yeah, it all depends on the restart, if he can get a good break on a restart. What about Christian Eckes? This has been a great performance. We knew that number 19 truck was really fast. He was able to fight on the outside to get to the front. Spent a lot of time running around the top of the track. And here he finds himself with the lead. And I'd say he's going to go to the bottom. Yeah, let's see if we can talk to him. Hey, Christian Eckes, Phil Parsons in the Fox team. You got a copy? Man, I got you loud and clear. He was talking to his team. There was I think he said he got you loud and clear. Sorry, Christian. Hey, great job today, buddy. We we joke that you probably have driven more miles than anybody else as much as you've been on the high side, but you got the great track position now. What are you thinking uh, as we get towards the end here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a dogfight today, man. Um, I think we've gone to the front to the back, to the front to the back about 15 times, but uh, got ourselves in position here. I feel like we got a pretty good pusher behind us at the 25, so um, hopefully we can hold on here, but just proud of the efforts regardless. Do you guys have a plan with the 25 to work together? Uh, that's what TV's for, man. You got to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been watching. You, you've made a lot of moves on your own. You've had a lot of good help, and you've helped a lot of people. Hopefully, uh, maybe he's a Chevrolet teammate there with the 25, but I know Chandler Smith obviously would like to win this race as well. You guys have been teammates before on the same team. Yeah, absolutely. We've been buddies and been racing for... Uh, probably 10, 15 years now, so hopefully it's nice to be here. <laughs> All right, buddy, appreciate you talking to us. Have a good finish here. Thanks, Bill. Always nice when you have a buddy around. You know what to expect from them. You know how they race you. Kind of a neat story. Did you see that graphic, how he's finished in the playoffs? It's just incredible. Second, third, a win, second, and now he's leading here. And that one second really gets on his nerves. The one that he. He said he had, had. a hard time shaking Bristol, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> the one that got away. That, that's what's weird about race car drivers is he'll remember that one more than he will the win he got. You know what I mean? That's that's what's sad about us race car drivers is you remember the ones that got away more than you rem remember the ones that you got. There goes those Chevys to the bottom. See if they can string together three laps without a caution. The Tricon trucks are going to split. Dean Thompson went to the inside. Corey Heim went to the outside. But Daniel Dial, we talked about Daniel running up here in the top 10, late in the going. I'm sure his eyes are wide open, trying to learn all he can and apply those lessons in these last few laps. So many damaged trucks out there. You just watch them as they were doing the chews, all the bear bond out there. I think there are 19 or 20 trucks that have officially been involved in, in wrecks today, and so many of them still, still chugging along out there. I hope that's it. I hope that's all that's going to be involved in an accident. I'd love to see us run these last three laps clean. Me too. I mean, Christian Eckes was even involved at one point. He tapped somebody that went around, and thankfully for him, he didn't have any damage. But Brett Moffitt's truck looks great. Chandler Smith and Ben Rhodes. I'll stop trying to jinx them up front. <laughs> they look good right now for the these final few laps here. Hey, for those of you looking for the Baylor versus UCF game, they'll start on the Fox Sports app, and we'll get you out there as soon as the race concludes. I think all these racers are hoping that's in three laps yeah. so that we can just Brawl it out all the way to the checkered flag. Can we hold our breath for three laps here at Talladega? I'm, I'm getting tired. 
I'm getting tired because I'm, my heart rate's been <laughs> so high all race long. I feel like I use a lot of energy watching these trucks at these Daytona and Talladega <laughs> races. There's a lot to watch. 2.6 miles around. These restarts have been fun to watch. You guys pull, pull your belts tight here, Jamie. I'm pulling the belt tight, getting the microphone close. Boys ready? Postbar is ready to do business. He's got his visor down. Christian Eckes, Brett Moffitt on the front row. Drivers in yellow are the playoff drivers. Green flag back in the air. Remember what a great pusher Ben Rhodes has been all day long. He's right behind that board of Moffitt. Both lines really organized right up front. Got to watch your pushes. I know you want to give it all you got, but you got to make sure you hit the guy in front of you properly. Look at those four. You could throw a blanket over the those four trucks up front. Then there's that gap back to the next group of four trucks. Corey Heim on the outside. Dean Thompson up there. Now does Christian flare up? He's got a bit of an advantage, or does he stay down there on the bottom? Oh, oh Matt, Crafton. Matt Crafton gets into Brett Holmes. Big Brooks win. wrecking everywhere. Caution is out for the eighth time. Grand, fin Grand Infinger in this one as well. And they're still hitting each other. There's Grand Infinger. I didn't think there could be any more damage to the front of that truck, but there is. Jeff Hensley is watching this video closely, seeing what that team needs to do. That's Greg Van Alst right there with a the big hit. They're going to stop these trucks once again, bring out that red flag. Did he end up there? Did he drive it to pit road? He drove it. Big hit for the 88. That's where it looked like this whole incident began. We'll have to look back and see what caused it. Is that Corey Roper? Yes, it, it is. is. Zero damage. four truck. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite do it. Couldn't quite get to the end. Oh, that Sanchez tried to go to the middle. Very much like the incident we just saw prior to this one. He and Matt Crafton made contact, and that's what started this. You know, our job is to report as experienced racers what we see causes wrecks. And this is just a situation where it's a chain reaction. One guy thinks he can get in a hole, and another guy doesn't think there's room, and things go all to pieces. You know, whether you hang that on Matt Crafton or if you hang it on Sanchez, certainly just battling for space. A little bit of space. Brett Holmes, issues. tough break. Brett's had a great run here. Look at all these trucks. Hard, hard Down contact. 12 to for, 15 with contact. Yeah, Greg Van Alst, hard, hard contact. See Nick just phased to the inside, maybe thinking about going through the middle. Not even sure he was going to commit to the middle. If I'm Matt Crafton, I say, well, he just hooked me. You know, he turned me. But if I'm Sanchez, I'm like, well, I, you know, I was trying to get in the middle and there was room. Oh, oh, huge hit Van for Greg Van Alst. Head on. Crazy. Van Alst, big Arkham Menards winner at Daytona. He's good at these places. New to the truck series and a huge hit for him. Brett Holmes hoping for redemption. Finished third here last year. At his home track. I think Raja emerged pretty unscathed there. Good to see Matt get out of that truck. Did he stop? By Sanchez? Is that the two pit I, box? I don't know. He's Sanchez? Having, it, it is? It is. Yeah. It is. I believe he was telling them. I told you my opinion of what Matt would think. I think he just explained to him, yeah. to them, his opinion. So a lot of cleanup here. We will go into NASCAR overtime. It's the 15 of Tanner Gray. Tanner led 12 laps in this race. Really did a nice job. Look at Majeski. Oh. More damage. 
He, he needs equal that amount of bearer bond on the left front now. Fourth through seventh in the playoff points separated by just eight points. Yeah. That shows you how important every lap is going to be here to try to get to the checkered flag. This is scary, the impact for Brandon Van Ost. All four tires come off the ground. Carson Hosevar is a part of this mix. See what he sees. He sees a mess. He was so quick. Had a little bit of contact, goes through the grass. I'm not sure he had a lot of contact. You see him sitting over there on the with the rest of the trucks while they do the big cleanup on the front stretch. He was able to back it down without any damage. Cleanup crews have been busy today at Talladega. So Christian Eckes, Brett Moffitt, Ben Rhodes, Chandler Smith, Corey Heim, Dean Thompson, they're all unscathed. This happened just behind them. This will be the fifth time in the last seven years that we have had overtime here at Talladega. Remember when Carson said he didn't think he did a lot with his feet, and I told him he did? Let's see what he did in this case. Break, break, break. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Try to keep it running. Well, when he watches this back, he might surprise himself. <laughs> it's pretty busy in there. He might sign up for Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I believe there are pictures of you on Dancing with the Stars floating around right now. Probably. It's not. It was a lot of fun. Let's go with that. Well, as we continue under red, let's go back to the studio and check in with Caitlin Vinci, Todd Bodine, and Larry Mack. Hey, Caitlin.
Thank you, Caitlin. And I think Larry Mack was spot on that Christian Eckes is in the best spot you can be <laughs> at this moment. Trucks are rolling. How is this one going to finish? You so never much, know. So much good experience around Christian Eckes right now, too, with Brett Moffitt, Ben Rhodes, Chandler Smith now full time Xfinity driver in the playoffs. So a lot of experience around Christian Eckes right now. So that has to make him feel a little bit more comfortable. It's cool to see Dean Thompson, Daniel Dye, a couple of guys slip through that crash and be in a position to get career best finishes. Pits are open right now. See if we'll have some takers. But how about Nick Sanchez, ninth right now? He had that penalty earlier for laying back on the restart, came back from that, was just involved in this incident, got into the 88, Matt Crafton, but he's hanging on. Truck seems to be good enough. He's ninth. Jimmy Hicks, our stats guru, said that we've had 26 trucks involved in accidents now of the 36 starters. Hey, and we got two more laps to go. A lot of pushing and shoving in these last two laps. Hosevar decides he needed some tires. Well, he spun. You know, we were riding along with him when he spun. There wasn't a very fast spin no, I, at the tail end of it, but still lost all his track position. Yeah, might as well, to might put, put, put on tires on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at there, flat spot. See yeah. the crew member on the right yeah. of the screen. Good that, call. That Good call, call there. Beating out the left front fender a little bit. Yeah, the right side looks really, really good. The left side has some damage. And Nick Sanchez's crew chief is Danny Stockman. He's with Josh. And Danny, first of all, what did you tell your driver after that last caution? And what is it going to take for you guys to close this thing out? Well, at the end of the day, we want to get the best finish we can. But if you look at the points right now, it's really, really tight. So. We got to be we got to be smart, but we got to be aggressive. We got to get the best finish we can. And uh, that was a little bit of a mistake uh, between a couple drivers. And uh, we got we got a green white checkered here. So it's probably going to continue to get wild. But uh, it's been a good we've had a lot of speed today. Um, we made a mistake on a restart, which which set us back. And we've had to claw away from the back on a on a pass through penalty. But uh, the Gamebridge Chevrolet has been really fast and the driver and the spotter has been working amazing together. So we'll just see where we can end up here. Thanks, Andy. And he talked about how tight those points are as they run right now. <laughs> <laughs> the two is four points above that cut line. Doesn't mm. want to lose a spot on the racetrack at this point. Heading into his home racetrack. Look at all these trucks involved in that wreck on lap 91. Started when Matt Kraft and Sanchez made contact and Took out quite a few trucks. Get down towards the end of the race, and fairly soon after a restart, everybody is running together. Occasionally, we get lucky and we have a single truck incident, or maybe a couple trucks, but unfortunately, not on not on this one. Four of those drivers are playoff drivers. Just been a day that Grant Enfinger wants to forget. Ty Majeski with. A lot of damage now just wants to be able to finish this one out. As a reminder, one race to go in the round of eight. Two weeks from now, we will race at Homestead Miami Speedway. We will see who will race for the championship. This is what you call persistence. We're going to do yes. whatever we got to do to get to the checker flag. Grant Infinger had a lot of damage to the left front. Now he's got damage to both sides of the front. A lot of these drivers up front here Last pit on lap number 60. I know we've had a jillion caution laps, but uh, you know 34 is a little bit outside the normal pit window here. But I think with all the caution laps, we're good for at least this this overtime finish. If we go too many more overtimes, I'm not sure. I just mentioned it. We're going to the beach. Heck yeah. Homestead Miami Speedway coming up in two weeks. This will decide who will race for the championship at Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to get in that pickup truck, be you and Michael, and ride down to Miami, aren't we? We're going to take that trophy with us. Yes, we are. Give it away. We know that Corey Heim is one of the four that will be contending for the title. What a fun racetrack. Look at those trucks coming off turn four. All of them right out against that outside I wall. I love that racetrack. So much action there. Hope you join us for that one. Corey Himes probably looking around right now going, 
Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry about this. No matter what happens right now, the outcome is the same. We are going to the championship. That hadn't, that hadn't motivated him to back off a nope. bit, nope. has it, though? He's been right up in the middle of the mix all day long. I love that about the effort today. Could have easily rode around and said, well, we're going to see how these wrecks play out. But no, he's been right up front. Speaking of Rex, the wrecker pushing Ty Majeski. Yeah, I saw him limp off pit road. I thought he was just waiting for the field to go by, but never was able to continue. The truck, did it refire there or no? I don't think so. Safety crews all heading back to their headquarters, and Majeski's truck's just not going to make it not going to come to life here is it let's get an update on nick sanchez josh well yeah near flawless day for nick sanchez but his crew chief derek nealon telling them during that last caution might have been a mistake on the part of the two there nick i, I love you i do but we've got to be a little bit smarter okay yep my bad let's go in for the truck my bad no i i get it i, I know what you're trying to do just Remember, there's still two races left after this one. If we make it to Phoenix, we can't be having loaded enemies. Yep, you're right. My bad. Big picture there. He just tried to squeeze into a hole, like I said earlier, that wasn't there. He was going to go three wide up the middle and just didn't have enough room to do so. And just saw an opportunity. Matt Crafton was a little bit wider than I think Nick felt like he should be, and he tried to stick it in a hole that just didn't work out. I agree with the spotter. Neelan, and I appreciate Nick's attitude toward it. You know, you just learn every day and you got to get better. Good counsel for Derek Neelan. Somebody, one of our, you know, spotters that's been around the longest time, knows what he's doing. He's a great spotter. Uh, he's a race car driver as well. And uh, it was good it, good advice there. Just got to got, got to be smarter. Got, can't make those you know decisions and those moves here that uh, has, a, has a marginal propensity of return. Obviously, he's a quick learner, Nick Sanchez. He's gotten himself this far. He has a chance at making it to the championship round, but he's made it to the round of eight. And knowing Nick, he'll probably want to talk to Matt Crafton. Hey, sorry, what could I do better? Or, you know, let's let's just work it out. I don't want to have an enemy out here. That's not good. Yeah, we know there's no no malicious intent on what Nick did. He was, as Michael said, he was just trying to get in the hole, thought about getting in a hole, and then it closed up. Unfortunately, his hair already had his nose in there. I said that's not good about Ty Majeski. Obviously, his day is done going back to the garage here as the drivers are choosing now. The Fords went to the bottom and the Chevys to the top. And a couple of Toyotas behind in each row. Dean Thompson on the inside and Corey Hyman on the outside. We're getting thinned out here, Phil. <laughs> and here come all the Stragglers. All, yeah, all torn up. Well, it's worked for Christian Eckes all day, so why not stick with it, right? See the sixth truck on the bottom there. Haley Deegan just outside the top ten. She's had a clean day. See what happens on these last couple of laps. See if she can get a top ten finish. Opportunity 250 today. Yeah. <laughs> Who's able to take advantage? I felt like it would be a playoff contender. Grant Enfinger now is off the racetrack. We're coming green, Phil. Yeah, as well as Majeski obviously being towed in. There's Haley Deegan. That truck looks fairly clean. A little tire mark there on the left rear quarter panel. Been a quiet day for Haley Deegan. Garrett Smithley in that 02. Still in there battling. There's Lawless Allen right around the top 10, all these trucks. Remember Haley finished sixth here in this race last year. Oh, Brett Moffitt, what a day. First start this year. Crew chief Seth Barber, longtime cup crew chief. He's a 12 time winner in the series. He's a champion. Now here he has a chance to win at Talladega. Keep your eye on the 19 of Christian Eckes. He has been the truck to beat in the playoffs. Christian Eckes has never been a bigger fan of Chandler Smith. He said they've raced together forever, right? Been now, friends forever. Christian needs the Chandler to do everything perfectly on this restart. They told Ben Rhodes, we need to win this race or finish second. No mistakes. We need to stay in the hunt. 
as that second truck on the inside line. The 25 truck is the ones that went to victory lane last year. Green flag is in the air for NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series overtime. Pretty even start there, Phil. Got some good pushers on the inside and the outside. Four trucks lined up on the inside. Oh, that's going to prevail. They broke apart a little bit on the outside between second and third. Oh. Dean Rep Thompson. Moffitt tried to extend that lead, but not so quick. The 25 cannot lock bumpers. Well, that, that was locked. That's about as locked as you can get right there. He's still locked. He's still locked to the 19. NASCAR watching that. You've got to give some space in between bumpers. This is going to be the push that gets them in front. Christian Eckes to the point. Chandler Smith right behind him. Here comes Parker Kligerman. He's run up front all day. Final lap. White flag is in the air. Next flag will end it. See Moffitt go up to the high side. Kligerman it... comes with him. We know how fast that truck's been. There's the block. Christian Eckes tries to block him, goes to the top. He's on the outside, three wide, through the middle. Brett Moffitt with a big push from Parker Kligerman. Can the inside line get that speed, get that energy? Ben Rhodes is pushing. Both of those drivers got clear of Chandler Smith. Here Brett Moffitt. Chandler Smith, he's got to run. Chandler Smith pushing the 34. He takes a look to the outside. Ben Rhodes takes a look to the inside. He hangs on, continues to push. Brett Moffitt, Brett Moffitt with the win at Talladega. Wow. Woo. One overtime. That's all it took. Welcome back to the Truck Series, Brett Moffitt. What a job by Brett Moffitt. And where do you think Christian Eck has finished? 19th, the last truck on the lead lap. Battling for the lead, and just like that, in one lap, drops. Bristol dominated, led all the way to just four or five laps to go. Those are a couple of tough laps for this young racer. Seth Barber, <laughs> he's like, all right, I'll come off the bench. He's the technical Thank director. Thank you guys so much. I've always wanted one of these things. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, everyone at Front Row. You don't get many new teams that come in. And this is essentially a new team, a second team for Front Row Motorsports, and go to Victory Lane. He came in as a teammate to Zane Smith to help him. But Zane Smith had his issues, was in the garage. Check this move out for Eckes. Taking the white flag here. What a move by Brett Moffitt right there. Race winning move to the outside. Watch him back. Cut underneath the 19. I can't believe he made contact and was still able to get underneath him. Big push from Parker Kligerman. And Christian now is out there by himself. Drops all the way back to the end of the line. 13th career win for Brett Moffitt, the 31 year old out of Grimes, Iowa. You mentioned Marcus from Freight Auctions. Freight Auctions on the side of this truck. Gave Long time his... supporter of Brett Moffitt. Of Brett Moffitt and of Front Row. That's right. And of NASCAR. Marcus is a really big fan of the sport. Cool to see him get to celebrate in victory lane. Brett's done burnt the right rear off of the field. <laughs> <laughs> well, the streak continues. No playoff drivers have ever won the playoff race at Talladega. And how about that? Parks it perfectly on the finish line. What about Ben Rhodes? You heard the radio transmission between he and his spotter. We, need to do, we either need to win or be second. And that's the only options we have, Ben said. I got gotcha. you. And he brought it home second. I love you, Brett. Brett is a good dude. First win at Talladega. Last win was back in 2020. He's been running in the Xfinity Series. Got the call. And you guys, we said it at the start of the show. This could be an audition for him. We don't know who is replacing. Zane Smith next year with this team. I think he had a good showing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Regan Smith, the winner, has joined you on the start finish line. Well, it's been three years since your last Truck Series win. Brett, this was a one off deal. You're an Xfinity regular. How does this one feel? It's pretty awesome. Um, 
I've notably struggled at the super speedways in the past and dreaded coming to them, but this was an all pressure off situation that front row gave me great options to uh, come here and just go out there and try to help a teammate. Obviously, that didn't work out for that group, but uh, I mean, to come here and have a shot at a win and to do it is pretty amazing. Just uh, reminds me of the good old days, and I want to get back to doing this on a regular basis, so we'll see what happens. Brett Moffat, your Truck Series winner at Talladega. Some great driving from that young man. Brett Moffat, first start this year, and he brings home the win. And here it is, the playoff leaderboard, round of eight. It's tight. Ah, uh, so close. Yeah. Four trucks within nine points. One wow. race remains in the round of eight as we go to Homestead Miami Speedway in two weeks. We hope you join us. There it is, October 21st, Trucks Race Day at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, and the Truck Series race will follow. For Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip, Josh Sims, Regan Smith, I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations to Brett Moffitt.